The town of Buñol, Spain is a modest little mountain town in the province of Valencia. Most of its 9,000 residents work in an industrial or agricultural field. The town itself is very much what one would think of a small Spanish town. Narrow winding streets, cobblestone sidewalks, a centro with a city hall and a church. But for one day, every year the streets here will run red, literally with tomato juice as seven dump trucks unload over 250,000 pounds of overripe tomatoes into a frenzy that no one is safe from. For the last hour, I've just participated in the world's largest food fight, and what you see behind me is the aftermath of La Tomatina right here in Buñol, Spain. My name is Guad Venegas. I'm just a regular guy who likes to travel and have a good time. But when I travel, I like to hang out with a couple million of my closest friends, eat their food, drink their drink, and party like a native. I'm on a mission to see the world one festival at a time and experience firsthand what people are like when they drop their guard and start to party. This is World Party. And today I'm hanging out in the city of Valencia, Spain. This is the closest large city to Buñol, and in the last couple of years, Valencia has done a lot to become a world-class travel destination. They've also now become the home of the European Grand Prix. So today I'll be walking around checking out some of the sites. I'll be drinking some horchata, eating some paella, and later on I'll talk to some of the people here to see how they're preparing to head over to La Tomatina. La Tomatina takes place in the small town of Buñol, Spain, which is about 25 miles west of Valencia. Situated on the Mediterranean, Valencia is Spain's third largest city and a great city to explore on its own right. This historical city was founded in 137 BC by the Romans. It has since been occupied by the Moors, Visigoths, and Muslims, giving the city a unique look and feel. For most of the 20th century though, Valencia was an industrial town. However, since the 1990s, Valencia has seen a rapid development that has turned the city into a major tourist attraction. The days leading up to the Tomatina are now especially busy as Valencia is not only where many Tomatia goers stay, but it is also now the home of the European Grand Prix, a Formula One race. The summers can be quite hot here, so to cool off, I'm gonna try a local traditional drink, an horchata. We've got the whole setup here with all the things that are traditionally served at an horchateria. This one is called Santa Catalina. I think it's been here for almost 200 years. So the most important thing, of course, is gonna be our horchata. It smells pretty good. A bit different than the horchata you get in the States because that one's made from rice. This one in Spain is actually made from chufa, which I have some right here. And it grows in the ground, it's a root. You can also eat it like this is what they're telling me. So I'm gonna take a bite of one of these and see what it tastes like. It's really hard. Tastes like almonds. Tastes just like almonds. I also have fartons here, which are kind of like a bread with, with powdered sugar. And what they're telling me is that the way you eat these is you dip them inside the horchata. So, like that, I guess. They're pretty good. They're actually really good. And I'm gonna have my first try at Spanish horchata. It's really good. It's like a dessert drink. It's really good. Wow, you can almost taste the earth in it. It's really good. Uh, okay, so they not only serve horchata, fartons, they have chufas, they also serve churros. And if you'd like, you can uh, add sugar. So they gave me a little sugar. The customer will add sugar depending on how sweet they want it to be. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. And uh, the churro is then dipped in chocolate. Looks like they like dipping things around here. Uh, so I got a, a cup of chocolate as well. Let's see what that tastes like. Mm. 
Very chocolatey. Very chocolatey. It's good, but I think the fartons and the horchata are much better. So I'm gonna finish up my horchata and fartons here, but when we come back, I'm gonna go check out the city of Buñol and see what preparations are taking place. The legendary Sun Tse once said in his most famous text, The Art of War, that one should know his battlefield. And today, that's what I'm going to be doing as I go scope out the city of Buñol the day before La Tomatina. Hey, I'm in Buñol 24 hours before the Tomatina. Tomorrow at exactly 11 a.m., this place is going to be going crazy. You'll see people right behind me by the thousands picking up tomatoes that will be dropped off by trucks that are going to be coming from this side, down this way, dropping them off right in the middle of the street. People are getting prepared right now. They're putting up pieces of wood to cover up their windows, and there's a lot of preparation going on right behind us. So what we're going to do right now is walk around and talk to the people of Buñol to see how they prepare for the Tomatina. The historic Stonewall buildings that line La Calle del Cid, the main road in town, are all draped in clear and blue plastic tarps. In a matter of a few hours, most of the city is going to be transformed in order to help protect windows and buildings from the coming food fight. TV crews are also on hand to set up cameras and run cables as La Tomatina is broadcast live in Spain. Okay, so we found a neighbor that speaks English, Margarita. This is, this is your house, and it looks like you're all ready to go for the festival. What, what, what did you do to your house to uh, protect it? Yeah, first, we are very tired. It's all night long, so we're sleepy. Okay. Then, uh, this morning, we start with first bakri, uh -huh. and then we just let the... Um, how can you tarp. say the tarp? You put a tarp in front of the Yeah, yeah. Now, that's what, that's what you do to protect your house. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else, how do you prepare for tomatina? I see you just yeah. some, some, some heavy drinking. Yeah. What, what do the neighbors do tonight? <laughs> what do you do tonight prior to the tomatina? All night long, party all night long. So, and then, we have to come here and clean everything, remove all the tomatoes, all the pieces, because otherwise, next year, this will be smelly. Yeah. So, we, we, have, to, we have to clean it. Yeah, I like it, but it's, it's a bit tiring because every year you have to be here. You can go abroad or you have to be here. That's the thing, but what is okay. It's so different. The tomatoes come from the fields of the autonomous community of Extremadura, and they've all been deemed overripe and inedible. So instead of just throwing them out, they've decided to throw them at each other in Buñol. The origins of La Tomatina are shrouded in mystery. Nobody seems to remember how or when it started. It is generally believed, though, that the first Tomatina was held in 1944 or 1945. Possible theories regarding its origin range from a food fight amongst friends to a practical joke on a bad street musician. Sister, it don't mean a thing unless it's got that minor sway. Each note we play is gonna make you smile. The most popular theory, though, is that disgruntled townspeople attack a local politician with tomatoes. Texas gypsies, Texas gypsies, we wander all around the Lone Star State. Whatever the reasons, though, the people here decided to hold the tomato fight again the next year, and so it became tradition. The festival was banned for a while under the dictatorship of Francisco Franco for having no religious significance. However, after his demise in the 1970s, the festival returned and has only continued to grow bigger and bigger every year. It is tradition the night before La Tomatina to have paella. And while Buñol has their own paella cook-off, I'm gonna go to the best place to get paella, which would be its birthplace, Valencia. Paella was originally a peasant's meal, cooked over an open flame and eaten with wooden spoons. Therefore, the most commonly used meat was whatever was cheap, and in this case, it was usually snails. Today, paella is still a popular dish, and for Valencia, a matter of civic pride. Every mother, every restaurant claimed to make the best. 
Nonetheless though, Valencia is going to be the best place to try some paella. Okay, so we actually made it to my second favorite part of the trip, that is behind the Tomatina, and it is having paella at an authentic Valencia Spanish food restaurant. We're at a restaurant called La Pepica, which is right off the water. You, I can actually smell the waves right behind me. And we had a couple of Spanish appetizers to start the evening, but now it's time for the big dish, the paella. We ordered a mixed paella, which is gonna have a mix of things. This one's gonna have seafood, the, the vegetables, and also the meats. We wanted to get a taste of, you know, a little bit of everything. So just for you guys to know, what paella is, uh, it, it's a traditional dish of, of Valencia. Uh, it's cooked with saffron rice, which is gonna be all under the meats or the seafood or the vegetables. Since we got it all mixed, everything's gonna be uh, right on top of the mix in there. You can see the mussels here. We have some shrimp, there's some lobster. I think there's some peppers. There's all kinds of stuff. Of course, we're gonna be uh, taking this down with a little bit of sangria. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try and see what the Valencia Paya Mixta here at La Pepica is like. Get some of these veggies and whatever this stuff is. All right. It's like the perfect amount of taste. Tastes like heaven, only in Valencia. The saffron rice gives the entire dish a great base, upon which the touches of rosemary and paprika really round up the entire dish and give it that traditional Valencia flavor. Another key is that the rice is cooked in a broth and just before all the broth is absorbed, the dish is taken off the flame and then allowed to absorb, giving the rice a caramelization on the bottom of the pan that is just also very unique to this region. Well, I'm gonna continue to enjoy my meal and when we come back, it is time to go to La Tomatina. It's about 1 a.m. the night or morning before La Tomatina. So we came out to one of the plazas in downtown Valencia. It's called Plaza de la Virgen, where a lot of the people pre-party before the Tomatina. Some of them actually party all night long and go straight from this to the Tomatina. So what are you girls doing out here tonight? <laughs> Having a bit of fun. Yeah. We're here for La Tomatina, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, tonight we're out with party. We're with um, the fanatics. Yeah, what's, what's yeah. the yellow shirt? There's thousands of people walking around with these yellow shirts. A few, well, them, a few of them just kicked our car when we drove here. Oh, really? <laughs> well, yeah, ba well basically, you'll find a load of very rowdy Aussies. Um, but no, fanatics is a tour group. And tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we go to Punal. Punol. Punol. <laughs> Punol. And then Punol. we spend, I think, three hours throwing tomatoes at each other. No, it's just one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only from 11 to 12. So you're gonna go oh, in. No, no. <laughs> we got 11 to 2. All right. So how are you guys feeling tonight? Pumped. What do you expect from La Tomatina? Is this your first time? Yes. What do you expect? Um, very wild, chaos, very messy, but awesome. I'm what are you gonna be wearing? Yeah, I was gonna wear goggles, but I was uh, warned against them. Really? Yeah. Why were you warned? Okay, I'm actually gonna wear some goggles. Well, yeah. Okay. Well. I was just, the reason I, I don't know, but I was the one against it, wearing goggles. But why? Because it still gets in your eyes anyway. With the goggles? Yeah. Nah, you got a man up. Yeah. You look like a bit of a goose. A bit of a, yeah. Like, hey, I'm going to look like a dork with my yeah, goggles, I guess. Yeah. All right, guys. You don't want to become a target. Because I had goggles, goggles. I'd be like, get the, the, get the guy with the target. goggles. He was wearing goggles, I was so... Yeah. I wouldn't even squash it. I wouldn't even squash Maybe it. Maybe I'll go without goggles then. Okay. Hey guys, well thanks right, a lot thanks for taking lot. the time. No Have worries. fun tomorrow. Maybe we'll yeah. see you there. Today is the last Wednesday in the month of August, and that means it is time for La Tomatina. Buses and trains will start taking people from Valencia to Buñol starting at 6 a.m. We expect between 30 to 40,000 participants, and given that Buñol only has about 9,000 people in population, most of the participants are gonna be from out of town. So we have to hurry up and get there early. But first, here's what we'll need. First, you're gonna need a white t-shirt. Like so many Spanish festivals, a white t-shirt is customary. 
plus the tomato stains will show up much better. Second, swimwear or old clothes are mandatory. Third, and this is a double-edged sword, organizers recommend eyewear, and while this would be protective, it also makes a target out of you. In fact, cameras, skimpy clothing, or anything that screams tourist will make a target out of you. Fourth, if you're taking public transportation, try and stash an extra t-shirt. You need a clean shirt to get back on the train or a bus. Other than that, maybe just bring a few euro for food, drinks, or a souvenir. Otherwise, anything else will probably be lost or ruined. Now to the rules. The rules of La Tomatina. Rule number one, throw only tomatoes. Rule number two, squish the tomato in your hand before throwing. Rule number three, throwing must start and stop at the sound of the fireworks. Rule number four, do not climb on the trucks. Rule number five, do not rip off anyone's clothing. It should be noted that this rule is universally ignored and your shirt will most likely be ripped off. When we come back, La Tomatina. Tomatina is about to begin and most of this crowd has been drinking all night. They are now getting really antsy and as you can see, there are locals on patios, roof and platforms spraying water trying to keep everyone cool. It is a capacity crowd this year. Everyone has come out in droves. I have no idea how many exactly, but it seems like tens of thousands of people are already squashed into the road. I have no idea how the trucks are going to be driving through this. One other quick note is that the plaza adjacent to the city hall is the designated spectator zone. If you stand there, typically you are left alone and your shirt won't get ripped off. So waiting for Tomatina to start, I'm somewhere in here in this insane drunken mob. These people have been drinking in the streets all night here or in Valencia. They haven't slept and they're just fueled with adrenaline and alcohol right now. It's all starting to get out of control. The t-shirt ripping is in full swing. If you're lucky, sometimes you can just hand it over, but most of the time, you're gonna get mobbed and attacked. They're gonna rip it right off your back. Okay, the trucks are starting to make their way on the main road right now. As soon as the rocket goes off, it is on. This is what we came to Spain for.
festival just ended and the cleaning actually starts right away. As you can see, the walls are covered in tomato. There was about a foot of tomato water right on the bottom here. And to get back on the bus, I'm gonna have to get holes off and I'm gonna find a new t-shirt, which is gonna be hard because t-shirts get ripped off in this place. Apparently they don't let you on the bus unless you uh, have a nice t-shirt. Another thing is the tomato will actually help the city walls because of the acidity. So once they wash it off with all this water, it's supposed to be looking a lot nicer. And so with the massive cleaning effort underway, I decided to head back to the train station. The one thing that no one mentioned to me is how much the tomato itches and burns once it gets baked onto the skin. So what the city has done is they set up shower stations to clean everyone off so they can try and be a little more presentable when getting on the bus, train, or car. And it feels great to get hosed off after standing in the heat and getting covered in tomatoes and other people's sweat. All right, well, almost showered and ready to go. I am bruised, sore, and tired. So that's all we've got from the Tomatina right here from Buñol, Spain. See you guys next time on World Party. Now, where the hell am I gonna find a shirt? Thank you.